Hi everyone, welcome to Bio 347, Biostatistics and Experimental Design. This lecture is on variance measures of continuous data. So this is, um, we're gonna look at if you are interested in a variation in your data, why would you be interested in this? Most experiments, you're interested in the means. And what I mean by, what I mean by that is uh, when you give a drug to a person, you wanna know on average, does it work? So most of the time we are interested in mean differences or uh, trends, okay? Where if you increase the drug, what is the effect on the average person? Sometimes we're interested in the variance per se. So I'll, I'll give an example in this class. So, uh, I don't teach to the this imaginary uh, average student. What you have to do as somebody that's teaching statistics is think of the variation in the abilities and backgrounds of students that come to your class. So uh, for example, many students come in with uh, having had math 150 and uh, other experiences in statistics. And so they find this course relatively easy. Other people may not have had Math 150 yet, which is our basic stats course at Wilkes and really haven't been exposed to many, to many statistical ideas. And so this, this class is completely uh, new. Um, and so I don't teach to an average student. I try and teach to all the students, but I have to consider the variation and what we're getting. The other thing that we have to consider is another example is in habitat studies in ecology, we may not be interested in the uh, average habitat, but really the variation and flexibility that, a, that an animal uses. So for example, pollinators, are they using a single species or are they using multiple species? Um, is a habitat, is it narrowly defined or there are there animals out there like raccoons and robins that live in the city, they live in the country, they live in fields, they live in forests, etc. So variation sometimes uh, is, is uh, a question of interest. And if you imagine if you are uh, working in bioengineering and you're trying to develop prosthetics you have to be interested in uh, fitting prosthetics to uh, different body shapes and forms. And so you would be interested in variation as well. So it's a very important uh, aspect of statistics on its own. And in addition to that, um, there are lots of assumptions about variation for tests. And so this will give you the underlying uh, information if you can go a particular direction in your statistics. So, all right, let's get started. So there's several measures of variance. And in fact, you know, I went over this with uh, the descriptive data, but let's refresh real quick. And so variance is a square measure, right? So we're going to have sigma squared. And for a population, that is going to be the sum of xi minus x bar, that value, all over n. And just as a reminder, if you measure something in a single dimension, such as meters, your variance is going to be um, meter squared if you're measuring an area and uh, therefore you're going to have like meters squared your variance measure is going to be variance to the fourth uh, meters to the fourth so we often take the square root of the variance to get us in the same dim dimensions we measured in right and standard deviation is just the square root of the variance so that equation I just posted is the uh, population and 
this essentially is a formula uh, you wouldn't use because um, you very rarely have a, a, the population, every individual on hand. Instead, what we get is uh, sigma squared hat, which is an estimate, which is equal also to S squared. And that is the same thing, right? So it's every observation minus the mean, and we're gonna square that, there goes my n, and divide by n minus one. And that's because if you don't uh, subtract a degree of freedom, uh, you will overestimate your uh, variance. Okay. Underestimate, sorry, underestimate variance. So you'll lose a degree of freedom uh, to adjust for that because it's an estimate, okay? And you don't get that in the population because it's not an estimate. So you just have your degrees of freedom. All right, so um, let me introduce two terms, which are descriptions of the same thing. You have zero, Scedasticity and homo scedasticity. Okay. And uh, if you know a little bit of Latin, you know that hetero means different. Okay. Like heterozygous. Uh, but heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity refer to when you're comparing uh, two samples or two populations or sample to population, whatever. You have two groups and you're sampling and uh, comparing their variances. Hetero, meaning different, means they have different variants, and homo means they have the same variance. Okay. That's all that means. This has nothing to say about the difference in means, okay? So um, if you could imagine, I could have one year I get biostats with, um, everybody has about a 3.0 average and uh, they all had math 150 and they all come in with the same thing and Another year they come in with the same GPA 3.0, but some don't have uh, any math background and others come having taken several stats courses, right? So this says nothing about the mean. This is just a measure of the variance. Homo meaning the same, meaning they have the same variance. Hetero meaning different, means those two groups have different variances, okay? We can test, you know, a not a, Officially, but we can formally uh, test variances with an F test. Okay. And the F test is relatively simple. It was developed by George Snedeker, who um, is the first department chair of the first department of statistics in the US which I believe was uh, in Iowa, okay? The F test is really simple. So it's just the variance of one group over another group, okay? So the subscripts refer to the groups, right? So S is the variance or S squared is the variance, S squared is the variance. And this is just group one and group two, okay? And this is tested when you, when you do this test, you'll have an alpha, right? That's your error rate. And you'll have um, two degrees of freedom. Okay. You'll have degrees of freedom of your first group and degrees of freedom of your second group, okay? So you don't have one degree of freedom, you actually have two degrees of freedom. So, uh, the nice thing is you don't have to carry around your statistical tables. Uh, in R, this would just be var.test, okay? And that's all you do. 
Uh, it's relatively simple, my simple test. Um, but this, you do a test of variance of two groups when you're doing t tests, and we'll do that next chapter. If you're doing ANOVA and you have more than three groups, you do a Bartlett's test. And there's another test, let me add to your list, a Levine test. Okay. So the Bartlett's test is parametric for normal data. So parametric just means you um, are making an assumption about the underlying distribution of the data. So the Bartlett's test assume that all your data are normally distributed. Uh, what you don't know is the distribution of the variance, okay? The Levine test, you don't know if your data are normal. This, but your testing is just the uh, variance between your groups. Just two comparisons, and we'll see the F test later on. And then the Bartlett's and the Levine tests are used for uh, when you have more than two groups. Okay, and that's it. Nice, short, sweet lecture. Can't they all be like this? No, they can't. So sorry. If you have any questions, send me an email.